All right, in this uh, quick tutorial, I want to cover a tool that we haven't used a whole lot. Uh, it's one of the special modes of uh, this tool here, which is for straight lines usually. And uh, as you notice, I'm using PD Artist in this case, but this can also, be, of course, be done with the big brother, PD Howler. Um, it's actually a tool that you see both, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty much this tool here, right? <laughs> so uh, one thing I want to do also is I'm going to use it to create some shapes or some patterns and they will serve as an interesting new type of uh, elevation map to create some cityscapes or landscapes with uh, a little bit of a, um, I don't know, a post-apocalyptic uh, city look or, or maybe just a dry desert city. <coughs> so um, let's get started. Uh, actually what I'll do is I'll, I'll start with a smaller version uh, so that it goes faster and uh, because it has a couple of other merits and what I'll do is I'll 640 by 360 something like that all right and keep in mind again you can use control shift to drag this around to position it somewhere else and we will do that a few times but before we get there let's start with this tool <coughs> um, normally it's in the natural media lines so it's using whatever your current brush is uh, for instance, if you had chosen any of these uh, favorites uh, <coughs> boingly, it would draw those lines along the path. Actually, right now I'm drawing painting, and if I go back to this mode, it's applying that along the the path, something like this. Right. Um, so now what we'll do is we'll switch to this mode. This is the graphical lines mode. And when you do this, you have more of a, a straight graphical line. Right button uh, is using the right color or secondary color. Left button is using the primary color. Let's go erase this and uh, explore that a little bit more. Uh, we can change the size <coughs> and create them a little bit less um, imposing. And then also the opacity. Uh, like go down to about 20%. So you have a couple of different maybe 30 or 40 percent so you have different levels of opacities here and so the nice thing with this is you can you can have them overlap and get darker and so on okay so let's see if I just do a couple of these this looks chaotic let's make it even more chaotic by adding um, the mirroring symmetry um, we could do the uh, horizontal mirror and again here for the vertical mirror now you have to draw in the upper right quadrant in that case, right? If you draw down here, nothing happens. Only the upper right quadrant is being used when you have both horizontal and vertical <coughs> mirror enabled. All right, so that would be perhaps my elevation map. Let's go turn off the symmetry. And, oh, that's not good. <laughs> so what we want to do is uh, enable the symmetry and enable the symmetry again okay and then keep a copy of that all right and clear that okay and oh yeah i don't know it didn't undo it this time so if it undoes it then you now have a copy you can restore from this stored copy here <coughs> and uh, let's make it also there's one little white line here apparently i'm gonna go and make it uh, seamless <coughs> something like this image make seamless and just a little bit overlap is probably good. Okay, so something like this and store this one. All right, so now I'm gonna move this over here to the right side because I'm gonna get me the filter for the puppy ray and the GPU. All right, <coughs> all right, so you see here, it's not looking like a natural landscape anymore. It's a bit more rugged and mysterious looking. And of course, we'll want to enable <coughs> the sky um, with the reddish tint and enable global illumination with that. Perhaps use the camera controls, uh, this one here, to look towards where the sunlight appears to be coming. And if you see a great vantage point like this, maybe you want to move the sunlight to come from a different place. Uh, maybe adjust the intensity of the sunlight. All right, something like this. All right, and then also we could reduce or increase the uh, the softness of that terrain, that's the pre-filtering of the landscape. Let's go without interpolation so it's crisp. Let's go with higher quality, let's see high quality, and uh, we might even go 
at that point uh, show more options and focus a little bit more on the on the rendering um, you know for your final rendering you might go to something like final render that de that depends really on how fast your your GPU is so you'll see at some point if you reach a limit and Windows resets it and it crashes unfortunately <coughs> so you'll want to be careful about that and instead of increasing the ray steps what what you could do is increase the anti-alias steps right that might get you still better quality um, and less grainy and there will be some improvements actually on that aspect in the next release <coughs> but uh, we have here an interesting start for the landscape now so I'm going to store that one and we'll have just this one put aside uh, I just want to explore that technique a little bit more so we'll go back to an, a blank one here go back to the drawing with the linear tool right I think that's what they call it the linear tool and this time we'll do uh, we focus on the start cap and the end cap so uh, instead of having them flat we can give them a round anchor and that will look a little bit like um, a printed circuit board right a round anchor on that as well so now we have something like this right let's make it a little bit smaller size oh that's a step uh, opacity size there you go something like this all right <coughs> and now these can still go in diagonal if you want them to be forced to horizontal or vertical you go down on the right side here well it may be on the left side for you if you didn't switch it this is the sidebar and uh, you know you can change the location of that in the layout sidebar on left or sidebar on right I like it on the right side and if you scroll down here below the info there's a grids section it might be closed like this so make sure you click on the plus sign to open that and and then you can see the visible grid uh, or also the drawing grid the visible grid you don't really need but uh, it's nice to have a visual reference that you can actually see and tell where the lines are that uh, will help you uh, guide your your drawing uh, <coughs> it's not exactly on that though so it's only an indicator of the parallelism and the spacing all right so um, you know if you keep it visible or not doesn't matter what you want to do is see if you can have it locked uh, there it is see how you can have it locked and <coughs> you can have sort of a a bit more of a um, structured organization there maybe even have one go across like that couple of those and certainly something like this that seems to be budding or ending something like that and do a couple of these and then so quickly you can create some snazzy looking backgrounds just for your game you know uh, make it look like some sort of electronic world right. And then of course there's the mischief there's always one that's different in fact let's go and undo that let's give him a little bit more space a little bit more uh, size there you go the big brother on top all right so we have that uh, we could make that one also a little bit uh, seamless probably don't need it much actually let's just leave it as is and um, store that every once in a while it's good to have a little snapshot and then uh, let's zoom in a little bit remember that's control shift and right button you can do that or you can use this uh, zoom tool here that's a hundred percent click and drag okay and I'm gonna move it to the right side and it still has a snapping uh, drawing grid so I'm gonna turn that off um, and now at this point I can go to filter transform puppy ray all right uh, or oh, that's still the old one but here's the new one all right so <coughs> you can tell um, the bright parts are still the higher elevation uh, maybe I'm going to enable the interpolation here let's go <coughs> medium quality um, let's go uh, let's see what else <coughs> let's go with uh, preview um, let's go camera move Alright, maybe I want these to stick out actually. So what I should do is invert it. So click here to restore, invert the image, 
um, invert, there it is, and also uh, get more of the dynamic range, because right now I'm not going as bright as white, right? so if I want more range of dark to bright, um, you would want to go to expand dynamic range. All right, and then uh, then you might actually even do some other things. Well, let's let's start with that. So store this one. We'll work from this one a few times. Explore something like uh, this one here, Puppy Ray GPU, and there you go. So now we have those things uh, stick out, and it really looks a bit more like a, a printed circuit board at that point, right? If you bring them flat down, something like this. Uh, perhaps change the angle <coughs> you are now looking at something that's a bit more PCB printed circuit board and <coughs> um, so let's let's go now make it a bit of a printed circuit board cityscape and uh, for that we need to bring it back up a little bit higher so we can cast some shadows actually really high let's go here move it down a little bit or move the camera up and start looking around let's let's move um, out of the scene but also look a little bit around right. this fog is going to help a lot in in making it uh, a bit of a perspective right if you if you move the fog to the back you can see even more of that cityscape but be careful it, it does take more time to render when you go to your high quality final render uh, <coughs> you you might uh, run into the GPU timeout problem here too all right so let's go <coughs> perhaps uh, with interpolation or without and um, or a little bit of smoothing and interpolation. If you add that interpolation, it's nice. It's, it's going to make it look a bit more like uh, some sand, wind blown sand has, w uh, you know, sanded it off. Another thing you could also do is start from this, add a bit of um, photographic filter di light diffusion, right? Because the light diffusion, you can tell here, has a little bit of a light grayish uh, glow around it and that will basically make it look like some sand uh, deposits or sediments uh, uh, accumulating along the walls so let's go to uh, photographic light diffusion one more time perhaps one a little bit closer and uh, tighter something like that I'll make it uh, best quality and go and so with that we have perhaps our final height map, let's go and uh, render that one more time, puppy ray GPU and see what we got here so it's still very grainy here at this level <coughs> but uh, if you if you zoom in maybe you find a spot like this one here that's worth zooming into all sorts of weird-looking uh, walls of some castle or some fortress city right, it will evoke all sorts of uh, imagery of this nature and this one here I'll render with um, let's say let's go with high quality and then anti-alias steps I'm gonna go to 22 <coughs> and um, you can see how the the, gran the graininess goes away with that. It's going to render it uh, much nicer. All right, so we have that. Okay, that maybe expand the dynamic range a little bit here now. We got even more contrast. Maybe that's too much. Let's do a, a soft undo or interactive undo so you can fade between the two. All right, so that's another one. Let's do uh, one more. I had uh, an interesting experiment at the very beginning of this. Um, what I'll do is I'll start from scratch again with the same tool. This time I'm going to go back to the square endings or flat endings, and both for the start and the beginning. So that's the default. And I think I did just something like this. Right, a couple of these, a couple of bigger ones. Let's go to a larger size, but more transparent or less opaque. 
Okay, something like this. And and then I did a um, make seamless uh, there <coughs> and made it all the way 50 to 50, so overlap a lot, right? So it y you you have a lot of chaotic overlaps here, and that makes another interesting um, start for a height map or elevation map. Um, in fact, this time I'm also going to do a little bit more filter. Um, which one was it? There was another <coughs> filter that sometimes could uh, crystallize, could be interesting too. Right, something like this. To add a bit of variation to the side, and then undo, interactive undo, to favor mostly the original, but give like 20 or 30% of the new one. You don't want to go this, well, you, you can certainly do that. All of these will be interesting in their own way. All right, so we have a, an interesting height map here. I'm going to go render that. Transform Puppy Ray. There you go. Let's make sure we go back to the quick preview. And so here it is. Uh, so this one looks a bit more like landscape mountain, but very rugged and almost still has a bit of a, um, a side effect of uh, a former city, maybe uh, really something in ruins. All right. Right, um, and then something that you also will find useful is perhaps if there are too many of these that are sticking out, um, what you could do is um, sharpen it a little bit on the on the grayscale. So first of all, expand the dynamic range, so you have some darker parts. But what you want to do is really have more of the darker parts. So go to the adjust uh, curves and <coughs> expand. The darker parts a little bit, so you have you have um, more of the dark showing. In fact, another place to do that is with the uh, sharpen filter, the max sharpen, and uh, do something like uh, a large window size. Uh, and then, so you you get the limitation. It reduces the number of colors that are actually in play. Uh, if you look at the the color values. Uh, it's it's going to have a, a bit of a mesa. You see how it's got a bunch here, and then boom, flat down, and then less. So, it it has a bit of a uh, uh, stratification effect. Uh, I'm going to go back to the uh, curves and adjust this one here for mostly dark, but then also plateau here, and then perhaps a little bit low, and then down. So you can you can play with that to create a couple of extremes. You have some pretty strong darkness here and pretty strong brightness. Um, you can, if it's too much, you can adjust with the interactive undo. And so now we have an interesting map once more. And this one is going to go and perhaps do our final render for this tutorial. So here we go. See how now you have almost c cathedral looks, right? So it looks like a block of an old cathedral. Um, and it might look like some big churches or big uh, government buildings and has a bit more of a uh, post-apocalyptic uh, impression uh, not on a flat land though it's on a very rugged mountain scene right so it, it, it makes it look like buildings like the Acropolis or something near uh, the top of a hill or on, on, on some mountains all right, so let's go and do our high quality or final render. I don't want to push it here. Uh, I'm going to go to um, let's go push the um, the anti-aliasing to level 22. And uh, so that's that for this quick tutorial. I wanted to just show you. You know, you can do more than uh, uh, mountain scenes that look like. Uh, the Swiss Alps. <laughs> you can also do things that look like uh, ruins of city buildings, blocks, and and some other stuff wherever your imagination takes you. All right. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.